So sir, Anupati got premiered at Rotterdam. So how was the experience there, sir? Yeah, the experience was really, really overwhelming, especially uh, the audience. You know, because uh, especially what we do in uh, in our country is that we hardly have uh, direct interactions with audience, which is where uh, a lot of uh, I feel that. Um, you know, people who are uh, really interested to know the to know how the making has been done and uh, to discuss the form of cinema, uh, not really the story or the outcome of it, but also to discuss the uh, how the how the film came into the came into the being. Uh, so, if we have that kind of a chance, uh, which is really a happening on. In an in an in, engaging or an immersive level, that's the best experience, and it's not only uh, the audience; it's also a festival which supports uh, different mediums of art, which is visual art, which is video art, art installation, and uh, you meet uh, some of the greatest minds involved in experimental cinema, in uh, also narrative cinema. Uh, you may get to meet the mentors, uh, so it's a it's a really great experience, and one of the uh, I would say one of the great experiences of my life so far of why I wanted to uh, make films, definitely. So, any other films or filmmakers like you were excited to see in the festival? Oh yeah, I'm, I was excited to uh, see Scott uh, because I have met him. Um, um, long ago in busan um and uh, which was i think before covid 2018 or 2019 this time rotterdam was doing a focus program on on him i also was looking forward to see uh, alexandra uh, golia uh, she was from uh, romania uh, she also makes uh, beautiful films which are some of the greatest films that I have seen in contemporary cinema, and I also was looking forward to meet uh, the fellow Indian filmmakers. You know that because I wanted to understand that uh, what the other uh, minds are doing in the same uh, region, uh, especially from the southern uh, Indian states. Also, from I get got to meet Ashish Da Ashish Abhikunta because he. He, I was a great admirer of uh, his films, but I could not meet him in person before this. So I was present in his screenings, and also I met uh, Sandra Huller. Uh, she had a she had a lovely talk uh, at the festival. Uh, we met a lot of people actually, but uh, I would say the one of the greatest meeting was with Alexandra Golia because she. Our film, according to me, uh, stood out from everything else. Sir, we will come to Anupati, but I want to ask, like, how your filmmaking journey started, sir? Okay, so basically, I could never think, and uh, I had never thought of uh, filmmaking, like as you, as it inspired it, you at a very young age. Uh, you must be in the twenties right now, right? So yeah, I had no such uh, inspiration. Yeah, so you're a, you're a kid now. So basically, uh, and when I was in your age, uh, I also did not uh, watch many films, to be very honest. I was uh, an avid reader because I love to read books a lot and uh, I love to write as well. So I was regular in writing, but I did not watch films. And of course, when we were in in school or university, our uh, film watching experience was very limited because the internet and all uh, was still a kind of challenging. The poor internet of BSNL and all, it sucked really. So we did not get to watch a lot of films. And uh, our, but, the, but one of the greatest thing was Calcutta still had a very strong uh, film watching culture, uh, film studies culture. Uh, which later on, when I wanted to watch many films, yeah. I could. And so I was in Delhi and I wanted to learn photography, especially, uh, so I learned fashion photography in the beginning. Uh, 
which I never used in my career, to be very honest. The reason I um, learned fashion photography and it kind of uh, deviated me, uh, made me understand that fashion is not for me. So I started doing street photography myself. And uh, there was this project of uh, which, which a museum uh, commissioned me. So by then I was doing uh, serious photography quite regularly. And the museum wanted to uh, do me a, um, a kind of calendar project, uh, which was based on different regions of the Ganges. And uh, so I themed uh, that uh, I would portray a woman in different Ganges, and we would photograph that. So when I was photographing that in, uh, it was in 2016, uh, so I understood that my interest is primarily in the moving image. Uh, instead of just a, a single layer of image creation. That is how it became dynamic and I ultimately started making films. But I, yeah, so now, now it's really something that I want to keep doing always. That's how it all happened. Uh, like you did your graduation in studies? I studied engineering. Uh, I studied uh, information technology. Uh, sadly, it was a very sad subject for me because I never wanted to study something like that. But you know, things happen because uh, we were at a generation when we were not deciding things for ourselves uh, for a longer time. And uh, yes, like family and everything, you know how it happened. So that's how it happened. But I never really implemented any of that in anything that I did in my life even if it is career oriented because my so work then was you totally went to any film school before making your first film no i had like uh, i did not do any regular courses uh, in any of the film schools but what i used to do is when i was in uh, delhi so I, whenever i uh, got opportunity and got some leave i used to visit ftii a lot for their uh, for their kind of small, small courses, workshop, uh, because of I did appreciation, I did a workshop on uh, image making movement. I also did a couple of uh, workshop at uh, NSD, uh, the National School of Drama and all, but uh, not like a regular course. I so did not do anything. Then you made your first film, Janabi. So, so how the idea came and what was your experience? So yeah, the idea was just that when uh, the photography project that I was telling you, uh, it's basically uh, when I was doing that calendar photo shoot, and I took, uh, I met uh, Janabi, the, the protagonist, her original name was Janabi, and I met her at an exhibition, and uh, I don't know how, because that, that was the time when I was looking for uh, 19 different women to portray 19 different uh, versions of, uh, you know, or locations of Ganges. But then when I looked at her, her first appearance, she was just like a visitor for, uh, like me. And uh, I thought that she is the one. And um, her name also uh, had a meaning related to Ganges. Mm -hmm. Janabi means also Ganga. So when I started talking to her and she said that, okay, let's try. Uh, we were not very, uh, very definite about that. We are going to create something like this because I didn't have any idea how to write scripts and all. But it, it I kept on uh, moving on it because we shot, I shot the film for uh, around two and a half years in different locations because I had to go to different different states and we could not do it at one go everyone had their work and it also needed a lot of money to travel uh, to do uh, the production and everything uh, logistics and all but later on when i was halfway through the shooting then i was deeply moved by uh, the flow of water you know the flow of water and how uh, how a woman life in India, it's very similar the way we treat uh, our river bodies today. Our river bodies are massively polluted. It's, it's tremendously ignored and 
the environmental challenge is heartbreaking, but still the, the political angle of it is also very derogatory. There is no awareness. It's kind of the same way we have been treating our women, only uh, you know, focusing them to create a motif of goddesses. But when it comes to reality, we really don't give them any goddess-like respect. So when, when I went to Varanasi, I was so deeply disappointed that people who have been worshipping uh, Ganga Mata in temples, it, these are the same people coming and urinating in the same physical river. How are they doing it? How are they throwing plastics in the real goddess? And then they go back and worship. What the hell is this? I mean, this contradiction is so uh, striking, but people never think of this. It's very... It's it's something like our women are treated like our water bodies. So I wanted to theme the whole film like that. And there was no dialogue. But since I had a habit of writing uh, poetry from a very young age. So I had my poems which were river is something or, or flow of water will be something that I never miss in any of my films. To be very honest. So it, it motivated me to write uh, poetry like that. And that's how we moved on and some of the film was made. Sir, how big that's was the crew? Uh, the crew was, the, the, in this film, the, you know, basically because, as I said, I didn't come from, a, uh, from an experienced uh, background. So I didn't have any idea that what camera should I use or because, uh, you know, the camera that you use for photography and the camera that you do film uh, can be so different. So they are not really the same and the output has to be checked and all. So we had crew changing almost every six months. I had a different cinematographer. I had a uh, different assistant. And uh, I and Janavi, both of us, uh, we were totally into it because we believed uh, in this project but uh, later on Shoham came Shoham was a uh, uh, first time uh, debut cinematographer it was also my debut film and uh, Shoham was the cinematographer it was his debut as well in Onubhuti also I have worked with him he, for the second time and uh, so we came together he also believed in the vision very much and we we were only four people to be honest the actor uh, and the actress, they were helping in the crew to, you know, they were doing production jobs. They were holding the tripod, they were giving me a bottle of uh, water, something like that. So we managed it somehow, like as a as a friendly group. So it was not a big crew at all. We were mostly. Sir, followers. what was the approximately budget then? Again, like. Uh, the budgeting and all can be done when we have a structure in my mind, right? So uh, later on, when I started writing, uh, by when I was halfway through the shoot, uh, my script went on and on, and it became more than 80 pages long because I also wanted to include uh, some mythology uh, part of it and wanted to do makeup like that, uh, everything. So budget uh, shooted up really, uh, and it. I had to spend almost 10 lakhs uh, when when uh, we were shooting in Varanasi after our first uh, shoot from Varanasi our camera was stolen from the train you know so we lost the entire footage and uh, we also had to pay for uh, the camera to our vendor so it was a tremendously challenge so for for next eight months we could not shoot at all and I was about to give up and it was like a depressive uh, period for me. But we somehow managed to do it again. Uh, so how long it took to make the whole film? So Janavi, we started in 2016 and we completed in 2019. Uh, we say three years. Three years basically. Yes. Yes, sir. So now Anupati, uh, how the idea came? And what was the experience there, sir? So by the time I finished making Janavi and the post-production was done and 
I could uh, show the film in in a big theater in the UK, and people really appreciated uh, the effort. I had a, a theatrical release, but it had only for it had run only for a couple of weeks in the UK, nowhere in India. But uh, people who were in the who were in the artistic segment, uh, they wanted to see the film. They appreciated the very untamed uh, uh, approach that came from zero inhibition. It was visible. When I actually watch my first film again, I really understand. I can see that in every single frame that it is made by someone who had no knowledge of filmmaking. And I think that helped the entire film so much that it was so pure. And honestly, I could never make a film like that again. It was so uh, encouraging because uh, it had a lot of flaws. It had uh, a lot of challenges, but it is really pure. So in that sense, uh, it is a great experience for me and for the other team members as well. They learned uh, filmmaking from from this. It acted like a film school for me, to be very honest. So then. The idea for Anubhuti and what was the experience? And Anubhuti, yeah. So, so sorry, I totally forgot the question. Anubhuti, I was I started writing a different script. I was working. I thought of a different story, which is based in um, in a border village in Assam and Bengal, Assam and Bangladesh. And then I visited uh, the place twice, but. Then on 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 a Sunday, I remember it was uh, summer months in Bengal. I I was driving in in a border village again between Bengal and Bangladesh, and I stopped somewhere and I was looking for water. And when I went inside a house, uh, like gaon ka ghar jaisa hota hai basically. So when I went inside, I met this uh, beautiful little girl. she was i think only 14 or 15 years old then and uh, asked for water and she was she was uh, getting decked up because she had a performance uh, in the village in the evening so there are this thousands of uh, people across india who are known to known for uh, drama performers they do village dramas they do jatra and all uh, basically a much rural form of our original theater i would say so uh, she was uh, dressing up like meera and uh, she uh, she was a great really melodious voice and uh, she was singing meera bhajan but she did not know anything of meera i mean she she knew the iconography a little bit but she did not know any historical aspects of meera so that is why uh, she kind of uh, uh, gave me an impression that whenever she would dress up she would start feeling the colors of radha because she and her entire family was uh, color blind from birth so she did not understand the color differences much so her personal story motivated me to understand and study the the iconographies of radha and meera and create a comparative study a visual study or a performance based study on both of them that's how it came to the being and i started so how long that. it took to make the film so it took around like 2019 beginning so basically you can say 5 years yeah. it took 5 years because covid came um, in between and I thank God that COVID came because I shot the film uh, once and then I threw that away because I did not like it. So when I it was in COVID when I uh, watched the clips uh, again time and again I did not like it and I uh, totally scrapped it. So then I started doing a workshop for almost a an year and I looked for performers but not actors. so that is how i got into the three uh, cast of the film and we uh, we did workshop for a year and then we shot the film That's at that point of time so you knew that it will went to rotterdam no 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 one can 
I think we we should never try to know because you know, like like we studied engineering, we did not know that we make films someday. You know, so films are also like uh, human beings. They have a they have an existence. They have a body. Uh, no matter it's intangible, but it's very much there. It's it's it exists. So we can really feel it. It can give us uh, emotions and feelings. That means that it is no less than a human presence. So we should not try to. I mean, it's according to me. We should not even try to create an audience for any of our films. And it can change. You know, someday we can make a different film totally because then then I would not be able to differentiate between two films that I made. So we should not try to. I think the best way is. to keep the original idea as much as original as possible and then the film will find its own destiny like we do for ourselves currently are you shooting a future projects or writing anything yes i uh, finished shooting my third feature film which is road to kirastami uh, road to kirastami i finished uh, shooting in last september right now i'm working on the post production and i have also written uh, my fourth film which is uh, a film called halfway to heaven uh, this i am planning to shoot uh, in 2024 i mean then this year but let's see how it goes because uh, you know the aspirations increase and you write something which needs more budget and that is why i am in the process right now how we can develop but this film is going to take more time it can even take 10 years to make so uh, just in that process but i am going to finish my third film road to kirastami this year and looking forward to and onubuti is also still in the process of visiting festivals so everything is coming so along road together to kirastami is a part of a trilogy Yes, it's the it's the first film of a trilogy that I have I've written three films together. It's Alchemy trilogy. I have named it. Why Alchemy? Because uh, this story has moved me so much. Uh, it has transformed my understanding of human life, which is not only uh, uh, I would say when I was making my first film. like the idea of uh, the comparison of river and and a woman is so deep and but presently when i think about that if i would make such a film i cannot make it anymore because my understanding of human life has now you know it it envisioned a different path now it is something which is a which is a conversation or a constant dialogue between life and death i would say so uh that is a meaning that i'm trying to search and probably this is something i'll hang on for a longer time in my uh, later films as well so sir yeah. if somebody wants to join you assist you how can he or she join see i'm more um, i don't know how whether the term assist is a right thing because this is how i started road to kiosam uh, so ram uh, ram is the protagonist who acted in the film and he is a filmmaker he is a filmmaker come actor mostly acted uh, in theater performers he is from jodhpur rajasthan and so he suddenly i think it was in 2021 he messaged me in instagram i had not known him otherwise he is saying that i have seen your first film jannabi and it is it is something that i really want to you know aspire so congratulations for that kind of film and he really loved it and um, so that is how we started talking and uh, so he also asked me that if i can assist him assist you in the film i said okay let's start talking and we'll see how it goes but within two months i uh, happened to travel a lot of villages in in the himalayas back then which are between india and nepal uh in north eastern part of the country so then i when my protagonist kind of became uh was totally influenced on him and i told him that you don't act you better act in the film uh, you don't assist me 
so he was a little hesitant in the beginning he said no no this is not going to happen i can't do it and all this is a big responsibility i said you will have to do this because now that you have totally given me uh, you know the poison of writing something based on you so you will have to do this now i have no other way so that's how it happened and i kind of but then when we start when we decided on the fact that he is going to do it both of us enjoyed it so much uh, we are still in the post production and we literally became brothers you know uh, tomorrow he is getting married and unfortunately i cannot attend his wedding sadly but uh, we literally became so close and the film brought us uh, he, his voice and his every attitude to it uh, made me inspired to write the story so later on i wrote the three films together and that's how it happened so assisting i mean we i am open to uh, collaborations not assisting as such because i am not sure how much people can assist but if anyone or is interested to work together more than welcome my website is there online there is my email address my whatsapp number is there anyone can approach me and would love to work if our visions match so sir you prefer like it. film school student or if they haven't done any course like it's fine it, it doesn't matter really so i have uh, good uh, you know good good feedback about uh, both and also bad feedback about both so it really doesn't matter i think a school also doesn't change as much uh, as long as if we want to keep original and going to a school also won't change it uh, uh, much according to me i'm not saying it have, has to have for everyone so it can be anyone i mean if if it i think if anyone is an interesting human, human being so nothing greater than that we can put our ideologies to work together sir uh, can you recommend some films and your favorite filmmaker that have influenced you okay so yeah my favorite films are i mean it's difficult but some filmmakers that i really look forward to you know uh, i have watched their films and i will keep watching their films time and again uh, first of all manikal of course because manikal i mean he has a huge uh, uh, what should i say I- impression of what i want to create his understanding of how to use music uh, how to create time and space for in a, in a non linear format it is deeply moving and he's a uh, master ritik ghotok also his uh, form uh, his experimental ideas to how a cinema can come into being and a film is not primary but the mission is primary so specifically uh, so it can be any other medium you know tomorrow we can take the whole film like a lot of mentors after watching anubhuti suggested me that you perform the whole film live and it ha- it does happen it does happen in a larger scale in europe in america in in art museums so it is not really film but we have to have a, a greater medium where we can create our artistic ideas to rejuvenate and um, convey a message so ritik ghotok was one such personality and uh, money call then i would like films of g aravindan these are from the indian uh, voices uh, also recently i i like a lot of film three of us which got into netflix which also ho- made into hall delis it was a beautiful uh, portrayal of something that is uh, extraordinary as well as well as very simple uh, i like such film and of, of course i mean some cinema that <clears throat> I would personally I can watch for hours is Abbas Kiyostami his uh, film making is uh, tremendously motivating for me I mean his cinema is uh, life saving to me <coughs> so I mean, so is- last question is if someone wants to become a filmmaker what advice would you give to him <coughs> excuse me this question itself is uh, you know there is no answer to this question i honestly don't want to advise anything to anyone because see we really don't know whether 
uh, we are film makers right because tomorrow the format may totally change and what we are creating in the name of video art or or uh, digital installation or or a narrative story or a commercial film or a contemporary cinema whatever it is there can be an age who can transform the whole form and uh, call it something else so in in terms of filmmaking i would say uh, being an artist is most mostly important uh, to understand to to be able to analyze that what is real and what is not and to be able to create our own uh, own imagination according to our will and according to what is happening around surrounding us so in that case uh, who values our subconscious we all have a very subconscious strong and it can go extreme so if we if we have that kind of understanding it helps it helps to uh, develop films or any mode of art so that's the only thing that i believe was a for join it's such a pleasure to be able to talk to you sir I hope like Anubhati will be released soon in India and everybody will get to see the film.